Hi guys, this is my stealth attire. Black. A 2006 first-person shooter developed by Criterion Games, a team mostly known for its racing series, Burnout, and as of recent, Need for Speed, Battlefront, and Battlefield, which come with their own controversies, but that doesn't matter. We're talking about 2006's Black. A vague title, but uh, the gameplay, not so vague. The action's crazy, there's explosions, there's Black Ops missions, and it's got a story. So let's tell that story. I'm Jack Keller, Sergeant First Class, that is, and I'm being interrogated by Chris Hansen. Do you have a seat over in that chair, please? He has no name. Tell me everything you know about Seventh Wave. He wants to know everything about a group called the Seventh Wave, a terrorist organization specializing in arms smuggling, homicide, and lying. And if I don't give him every detail of my reckless Black Ops mission, I'll be locked away in the brig forever to rot. So, this is the story of Jack Keller versus Russian terrorists. And this all happened four days ago in Chechnya, Russia. And we start off here, in the city of Oblensk. Where we were tasked to destroy a 7th wave stronghold. Only problem is, my team is pinned down. So in order to regroup, I'll have to up my kill count in the streets. Whoa. I then rendezvous with my black cell team. Things got real hairy, real quick. But luckily I had today's sponsor. Nothing. We kept pushing until we came upon another terrorist-controlled building, where I was told to hold my position. Oh, but I could taste blood. So I decided to rush in. You will hold your position, Bravo! I can't wait here! I'm moving out! You were specifically told to hold, but you didn't. Why? Charlie Dean was down. I wasn't gonna let this guy get away. And as I was sweeping the building, I was ambushed by an assassin, but doesn't shoot because he was American. He was American. A traitor? Question mark. And before I could ask any questions, an RPG hit the building, and I somehow safely returned to my team. And our next mission was to destroy a seventh wave weapons cache. So I was then dropped in Cherneska, equipped with a silenced pistol to sneak my way through the spooky forest, and most importantly, find the border because it needs crossed ASAP. A rifle would have made way more sense here, but that doesn't matter. I found the border, and I really wanted to make a border joke, but uh, that'd be crossing the line. So after shredding the defenses like cheese in a loaded potato, I fight my way across the Vlodnik Canal, aka this bridge, to reach an old farm that seemed to be abandoned, until I realized the buildings were stuffed with enemies like Christmas toys and Santa's sack. Hey! And after clearing him out like my apartment when I got evicted, the screen phased to black because the mission was over. How did you know McCarver had information on the American? This is where I met up with McCarver. She revealed that the American terrorist was a man named William Lennox, who worked on our side until faking his own death while stationed in Egypt. The bomb exploded, killed a lot of people. Including Lennox. He used that cover to become the gang boss of the terrorist group, the Seventh Wave. And you think Lennox is connected to Seventh Wave? He started the whole thing. Now outside the town of Nazrin, McCarver and I begin our journey to the Seventh Wave Arms Factory. But getting there won't be easy. There's snipers in the cemetery. So unlike everyone underneath me, I had to look alive. After giving the dead some new neighbors, we take a trip to the trenches, or what they call Sniper Alley, where RPGs rain down from above and AK-47s sing like a flock of canaries. But when there's rain, there's worms, and I'm a worm. <laughs> We did it, baby! We then continue our mission to the Foundry, or the Arms Creation Center. But I must be careful. There's enemies littered everywhere, like those mini fireball shots under the ski lift. Oh, but that's not all. There's mines all over the place, like a prospector's wet dream. But I didn't have time for that, so I just started blowing stuff up. I have the shot! Ah! 
one area leads to another, and we got inside the foundry, aka the weapons cache, where I destroyed every means of weapon production, putting a damper on the seventh wave's weapon production. Grenade! Tell me about Valencio. Our crew was assigned to take him out. Intel reported he was hiding in an old asylum. Now this is where we learn that one of the seventh wave bosses, Valencio, is hiding out in the Tivoli's asylum. It was heavily guarded. Oh, but just because there's a goalie doesn't mean you can't score, huh? And after blowing up the entrance, I'm told not to let anything in or out. But I want to hear Valencio squeal, so I head in. The asylum was filled to the brim with Valencio's bodyguards. Kind of like one of those cream-filled donut logs. So I couldn't help but to indulge in the action. Eventually, I descended into the deep sector of the asylum, where I removed the remaining bodyguards, threw a bunch of grenades in Valencio's bunker, and captured him. Please, I don't know! AKA tortured him for answers about Lennox's location. Ah, ah, ah. Apparently torturing wasn't part of the plan, but that's just how we roll. Your mission was to take out Valencio, not torture him. The new info we acquired from brutally torturing Valencio led us to the Veratska dockyard. And according to the interrogator, this mission was never approved by the higher ups. But that didn't matter. We had a job to do. And like the letter G in lasagna, nobody noticed I was there until they saw me. Hey there, it's Marco. Hey. There was a lot of intense combat scenarios to get through, but ultimately our goal was to reach Team Alpha, who have unfortunately been dispatched from living, all while that pesky Lennox escaped our grasp. This fiasco resulted in the whole operation being called off, but my team and I said, no way, man, we're getting Lennox. Lennox needed to be stopped. He wasted my friends. So, what was the plan? So we drop in at the Grasnay Bridge, because Lennox is hiding in a gulag on the other side. I'm not really sure how we'll get in, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, we gotta cross this bridge. Oh, but it won't be easy, with RPGs coming in from above, and landmines under my nose like a mustache. I had to move both quickly and carefully, while also using their defenses against them. Hey! 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 And once we got into striking distance of the Spetsernev Gulag, I blew open the entrance and said to my team, You're all holding me back. I'm going stag. We were almost there. I wanted to kill him so bad I could taste it. It was closer than any of the others. There was no way I was gonna let him get away. Get away again. The mission was to gain entrance to the underground compound. And to my surprise, there were a lot of enemies trying to prevent me from doing that. Daddy. <laughs> With the main entrance cleared, I made my way inside and began my descent into the underground sector of the underground, where I carefully navigated the tunnels of terror and chambers of chills. It was down here where I found the most powerful gun in the game, the Magnum. This pistol was stronger than a sniper and helped me reach the most underground area, where Lennox was hiding in his bunker. So I went wild down there and then eventually blew up his barricade. This is Bravo 3, target down. Ultimately killing Lennox himself. I've won. Lennox is dead. 
I killed him. Well, at least that's what I thought, because the interrogator reveals to me that Lennox is still alive, and that the authorities already knew everything about him. They even predicted that I, Sergeant Keller, would do exactly as I did. You did everything the psychologist said you'd do. My destructive path set up the actual mission to kill Lennox. My death will now be faked in a car crash, so I'll be free from consequence and able to actually complete that mission. Can you still taste it, Sergeant Keller? Yes. Then let us begin. And that was all gonna happen in Black 2, but it never happened. The end. And that's the video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I've been sick this past week, so my chest and throat hurt. Hopefully my voice was okay to listen to. Oh, uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, why don't you drop a like down below? Maybe even a comment. Or better yet, check out one of these videos I have right here. And very importantly, I want to give a huge thank you to the wonderful, amazing, beautiful patrons that are located directly behind me. I know I don't offer much yet on the Patreon, but it means the world that you guys support me. And thank you so much. And that's what it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one.